Living Rap, Living with Jonathan and Katie. Welcome, Welcome to, to living, living with Jonathan and Katie. Living and loving. Living and loving together forever. Forever. Today, guys, we have another hostful. Um, that was a great accent, Katie. Thank you so, so much, good. Tonya. <laughs> You guys know, if you've listened to our last Accents um, episode, how much accents mean to us. And I don't think you should have named it Accents, really. I think you should have named it Mr. Bitch Theatre, because that's what it was. I'm sorry. So we're going to start a new segment here uh, called Mr. Bitch Theatre. I don't know what accent I'm doing, if it's New Zealand, if it's uh, Australia. There's truly absolutely no way to know. <laughs> that was a great... That was exactly what that host sounded like. She it. was so cold. Um no, we'll just kind of feel it out. It'll just be like a fun convo. Maybe we'll do smack sex. Maybe we'll do like, uh, you know, a theatrical performance. Some spells. Yeah. What do you guys want? Call in. Let us know. Um, yeah. The five listeners who are listening each episode. Actually, no. There are some episodes where I saw 40. Up to 40. Up to 40. It is fun and on different platforms too. Yeah. <laughs> It is pretty crazy, though, like... I mean, honey, I got four views on our last YouTube, so no big deal. Every time we upload our podcast to our YouTube, we lose a subscriber. <laughs> so the last one, again, we lost another subscriber. We're just whittling down to our core. That's My mom really what did we're tell me she hates our podcast, so she did unsubscribe. I'm just kidding. Really? She hates it? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, you know what, Katie's mom? <laughs> Thank we you. We like our podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a month of love. Did you celebrate... Valentine's oh Day? yes okay so we me and my dear beloved um your dearly beloved my dearly beloved dearly beloved um <laughs> we stayed in uh drank champagne and order a bunch of dim sum and it was like perfect it was just like all these like dim sum buns and scallion pancakes and like chow mein and rice and we watched crouching tiger hidden dragon every t- every time i say that i want to do margaret cho's joke which is like it was like crouching tiger hidden faggot which i <laughs> love that punchline <laughs> every time i see that movie but it is truly a really great movie it is beautiful i only saw it once but i remember it being very beautiful so beautiful yeah. I just i know this is problematic and i know it's gonna put me in line with scar joe but i wish i was asian <laughs> I wish. Okay. Speaking of that weird medical study you were supposed to do. Yes. What happened with it? Okay. What um, was it? Okay. What, tell the people what it was supposed to be. It was about to like to see if your liver was going to like rot or something. So <laughs> they were going to give you $6,000 to be in the hospital for five days. And some of the patients would get placebos and some of them would get the actual liver medication. Mm-hmm. Of course, you have to sign away like <laughs> your right to sue if like your liver like half falls, falls off out, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So my parents were like, absolutely not like, okay, so you'll be out of a little bit of debt, but then like, you'll have to go back into debt because then your livers, you have liver problems. Yes. So they were like, why would you do that? It almost seems like you're playing with not only your health, but prolonging your money issues. So it's like, no. So what I did is I just went in for the health screening, which they paid a hundred dollars for just to be screened. Yeah. So even if they're like, oh no, you have too much liver damage or there's something wrong with your blood and they reject you, then you still get the hundred dollars. And of course they like gave it to me as, as I left, which is great. Um, so I just did that, but they had to like, you had to all these like crazy questions about like, just the craziest thing that you've ever like how much do you drink a week and also what do you like to drink and when's the last time you took tylenol and when's the last time you took ibuprofen and do you do coke (laughs) yeah (laughs) how many times have you gotten an std and all that stuff so of course i told the truth for half and then lied for the other half but like i took five tylenol i told them i took two (laughs) yes so um then of course came the um the 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 sordid subject of race (laughs) And it was done by a gay Latino who was on the phone who was the worst. He prolonged this entire conversation for no fucking reason. Okay. And as a gay Latino, I am going to make fun of him because he was <laughs> fucking terrible at his job. I was like, faggot, please move this fucking along. Like, he was crazy. Like, he would be like, um, he'd be like, uh, Jonathan, um, you know, there's uh, studies that you won't qualify for because it is not, it is for people who are between the ages of 42 and 65. So you don't qualify for that. And I'm like, could you tell me the studies I do qualify for? He's, he goes, Jonathan, Jonathan, I am telling you right now, <laughs> but I am trying to get my papers in order. There are a lot of studies. And then, um, so he just like prolonged things like that. At one point we lost pr- reception and I was like, of course we lost reception when he was like, um, have you had an STD before? And I and then he was like, <laughs> "Hello, hello." And I was like, "And I was like, yes, I have, yes, you know." And then he was like, "Hello." And then I was like, "Hello." And he was like, "Jonathan, I was about to hang up on you." Like he was 
crazy. Like he bugged the shit out of me. I was, was like, was he the guy from um, Legally Blonde who was like, did he don't stomp don't, don't stomp your <laughs> knockoff sh- or last season Prada shoes at me, Missy? Yeah, like that. Um, no, because if he could afford um like what that guy was wearing i don't think he'd be working at like a reception of a medical office also he told me his life story (laughs) which was he got this reception job by constantly being one of the subjects of the experiments so i was like absolutely so i'm like so i'm hearing there's a career opportunity here jonathan there's a career for you you, here you can move up so you have to make that of it that's so funny (laughs) so then he's like um so what race would you say you are and the only categories they had were white asian black and that's it and then they had a write-in race which is um you could put other or mixed right Mm -hmm. so then he was like um i was like well i'm latino he's like yeah but that's not a race he's like and uh, he's a latino he's, he's just telling me like what how they consider it yeah and so he was like, so do you identify as a white Latino, an Asian Latino, or a black Latino? And I was like, neither. I was like, none of those. I was like, I am like mixed, like most Latinos. I was like, you know. I was like, he's like, yes, I do know. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, so I, you know what I mean? And so then he was like, uh, he, he literally was like, tell me about your ancestry. And so I literally had to tell him because he said, he was like, he was like, uh, it's very important. He goes, I, I know it sounds weird, but he's like, there are only studies that can be done for Caucasians, only studies that can be done for Asians, only studies that can be done for blacks. And he, and he was like, and sometimes if you're part those things, even though you're part black or part Asian or part white, you don't qualify because you're not entirely that. Well, yeah. So then the data would be skewed on whatever the study was. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if, for instance, he was saying like, if, for instance, they were doing a study where they needed to see if like how Asian people reacted to a certain thing, right? right. Um, if you're like half white, half Asian, yeah, that you may not be qualified for it because the way genetics work is like if you're mixed, it's like a jumble of stuff. Yeah. So you could be Asian and look Asian, but because you're half white, maybe you don't have the gene that makes you intolerable to like a certain type of uh, herb or medicine or or something. You know what I mean? So then you basically inherited like a Caucasian gene for that, which then skews the data of the study. Did he, So when he was like, tell me about your ancestry where you're like, the year was 1322. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. No, I said, I said, no, I said, I started, I was like, well, it all started in the 1200s. <laughs> there was an offshoot tribe of the Incas, and they traveled down from the mountainous regions of Peru through Central America and settled in Central West Michoacan, the mountainous regions of the Purepechas. And then from there, I just go on. No, but basically, he was like, well, so I said, no, I, I basically cut the story short. And I was like, I'm, I'm just like a mixture of like Spanish, European, white people and indigenous, like the people of Mexico and like the native people of Mexico. And he was like, oh, okay. He was like, so I'm going to put that as mixed because we would count that as a mixture of white and Mm. Asian because he goes, actually Asian has the largest amount of like breadth. And so he's like, the native peoples actually count as Asian that's under... That's interesting. They came through that Bering Strait. Right. Gen- interesting. Genetically, I guess. And that's why on the ancestry reports and stuff, they always list Asian and native, if you notice that, together. Yeah. yeah. It's like two different parts of the same genetic coin. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in that study, he marked um, mixed white Asian. So you, in that study, you're Darren Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> It's like obviously I'm not like half Asian in the way that like people think of half I love Asian, that, but you like, know what I mean. Literally, you go in for casting and they're like, "You're not Asian." You're like, "Look at my medical history." <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, but this was the opposite of that. It was like yeah. not about how you looked. It was all about like, like what truly what was. is your thing is yeah. yeah. Um, and he's like, also you can decline to answer this, but we'll test your and ans- we're gonna get your because they got everything when I went in. Yeah, blood, cotton swab, saliva. <clears throat> he's like, we're gonna find out what your ancestry is, anyways, and we're gonna find out if you've been smoking weed and drinking alcohol. So don't lie to me right now because <laughs> I love that he's like, don't fucking lie to me. <laughs> don't don't lie to me. He's like Jonathan, don't lie. Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that is really funny. Yeah. Yeah. So he, but of course, like he had an accent. So he was like, like, we will find out if you did cocaine and uh, we'll find out if you got some Asian in you or <laughs> black in you, like we'll find it all out. And I was like, okay. Like it was very Nazi. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Jesus Christ. That's another reason that made me, gave me pause because I was like, some of the questions are just so invasive. Yeah. Oh, and because, um, I'm like a Latino who's like mixed, like yeah. mestizo, right? 
I only qualified for three studies where like race didn't have anything to do with it. All the other studies out of 50 that were available, you had to qualify like you had to fit firmly in a racial category. Interesting. It's really odd. And so I was like, wow. So there's just like mixed people out there in whatever capacity, whether you're, you're like a mestizo mixed person, Latino, or just like half this, half whatever, who won't quali- qualify for these like medical studies and all that stuff. Yeah. So it sounds yeah. weird it sounds creepy but it, it is creepy it is but it is actually medically it is very important because for example like they need to know like oh if diabetes is higher in the latino population the cdc needs to allocate more funding to like messaging in that right so like i think there was something on the ballot a while back that was like take the race off of like medical things but people were like the medical community was like please don't because it's actually it's important it seemed like a social justice thing but it's like actually guys it's like super important to know or right. like you know like sickle cell anemia and the black population like whatever right like, like race specific true. um things i guess white people really st- suffer from um no style itis <laughs> that's so stupid <laughs> he's like okay katie i don't like that joke so you're out <laughs> <laughs> that um, is so, but i am really happy that you're not doing it because when you told me about it you know you've told me about many a, a money-making plan you have yeah and um I, I was like, I'm not even going to tell him, don't do this. It sounded horrifying. So I'm really happy your parents talked to you out of it. Cause I was like, I don't want to get into it, but I want I didn't want you to do it is what I'm saying. Yeah. And then my dad, um, it's yeah, like, our, it's like, like how I was trying to get you not to do gay porn, but that one took a while. To that one's probably you safer to do actually. The <laughs> gay know. porn's probably safer. <laughs> I know it's true. Yeah. Um, I did. I do think recently I sent in a picture just for fun <laughs> to a company. <laughs> You know, you do crazy things when you're unemployed. I love you said to a company. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I had to talk you out of so many occupations. <laughs> I know. I mean, honestly, when you're poor and you are a gay who fucks <laughs> and single, back when I was single, um, sometimes you're just like, should I do porn? But I just don't think the entertainment industry, the straight entertainment, not like straight heterosexual, but meaning the non-porn entertainment industry. <laughs> this is all part of the adult, the adult world lingo. <laughs> Um, it's honestly, it's just lingo that I learned from watching the deuce. So this is antiquated lingo. That's probably from the seventies, but, um, you're like, look, when you're with your Johnny on the corner, there's nothing to do in the Kiki. Well, my favorite line was like, I don't have those contacts. I'm a porn agent. If you want to do straight film, you need a straight agent. That's like legit how she said it. I actually like that actress who played the agent. Do you remember the actress who played the, like the crazy, crazy, like prison bitch, in Orange is the New Black. Yes. That's who plays the oh, okay. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, where was I going with that? <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Your occupations that I've had to avoid. How oh. about, I'm trying to think of like crazy ways, not crazy ways, but I had my brain scan at UCLA. Um, For how much? I think it was like 150. It, what was cool about it is that um, it was they needed like females of a certain age, you uh-huh. know, four hundred years old. <laughs> when was this? Age is very important to um, yes, absolutely. Maybe like five, ten. I don't know. Sometime within the last like seven years. In fact, actually, age <clears throat> is probably the number one thing that's most important to those medical studies. Yeah, but it was like they're just looking for like young, like hot chicks, I guess. No, <laughs> they were like, "Do you have a brain?" You don't need it. Let us scan it. <laughs> did they mansplain how a woman's brain is smaller yes, than a man's brain afterwards? They did. But I actually did enjoy what I liked about it was um, I, I'm not claustrophobic. Uh, oh, um, I've said this before. I'm claustro. Love it. <laughs> Ew. So that's why you sleep in a coffin. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but what was cool is that I did get to see my brain. Well, it's funny that like in all the paperwork, I remember they were like, look, you can't look at your picture and like, don't freak out. Like, Uh you know, Um, but I did, I was a little sneaky sneak and I like could see it from the corner. But what was cool is that like, you know how a lot of people are hypochondriacs and they're always like, I have a brain tumor. Like I know. Right. And then I was like, I can see my brain right there and there's nothing in it. (laughs) And that's why it's good. (laughs) No, but it it was actually very comforting. Like I was like, oh, I don't, I'm not worried about issues. That's great. Um, and they said they would actually eventually send me the pictures, but they didn't. And I wanted to make art with them. No, I'm kidding. This is my brain. This is my brain. I'm a woman who <laughs> thinks and I have thoughts. These are where the thoughts occur. <laughs> Intimidated, then leave. <laughs> what was that joke from Difficult People? When I was raped for the second time for the first time. What was it? <laughs> the first time I was raped for the, the second, second time. Yes, yeah, that was it. Oh God! Um, rape is bad. Okay, rape is bad. Love is good though, and yeah. that's what I think the first question was. Oh, did you celebrate? Oh yeah, what when did you, you guys and, do? We actually did. We haven't really been doing much. Oh well, we have. Um, 
Well, let me ask you this. When you have like V-Day v at home dates, are you in your little jammies? Oh, yeah. We have onesies. That's the best. We have, we have onesies. <sighs> Yeah. I told Chris, Chris would be like kill himself if he was ever found in a onesie. Yeah. But then I got him a robe. Yeah. And he loves it so much. And he literally was like, damn, I bet a onesie is really nice. It is. It is What nice. kind of onesies are they? So I have a navy blue onesie. I look like a little like sailor going down to little the submarine. sailor boy. <laughs> yeah. Does it have little feet in it? No. Okay. No, no, no. It, it, the, the sexy onesies for men have to show their feet. <laughs> Because the onesie that doesn't show their feet is like very infantilizing, okay. you know what I mean? But if you show your big ass hairy feet, then it's kind of like, <laughs> then you, ooh. It's a man's onesie. Yeah. The, well, then it's just like long johns. It's like yeah, long yeah, underwear. Yeah. Does it have a little trap door? Oh, yeah. Oh, it does? Oh, yeah. It has okay. a trap door. And then it also like if it if it doesn't, if you're, it's not buttoned exactly right, like your cock will flop out. Like it's very sexy. Oh, on the front. I was thinking oh, on the back. Oh, no, no, no. It has... It has a trapdoor on the back, but if you don't button it all the way oh, up, it, like it, it. if it'll you leave a button, pop through. It'll your like cockadoodle do will <laughs> flop through. And then my lava has a uh, onesie that is bright red, fire truck red, ooh, red and blue. Mm -hmm. And so we're just like like two like very Benjamin Button. Remember when he was like on the steamship in like Arctic Russia, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and like like we're very like in the cabin, you know, during a storm, you know, just all cuddled up. Yeah. Did you own? Did you get them together? He got them last Christmas for us. And we okay. just like put them on. This Christmas, he only got himself a present. I mean, he got me presents, but like in terms of uh, uh, pajama wear. Sleepwear. <laughs> yeah. He got himself like unicorn slippers, which we both uh, switch off. This sounds crazy. Like the life of people who are coupled, like you think single people are crazy. We switch off. But when people are couples and they know each other so well, the stuff that you say and do around each other is like <laughs> insane. It's like insane. It's intimate. It's like. I would not have taken you for a onesie couple. I mean, I know he, those people, but like, I mean, but it, but they're like, they don't have a design on them. They're just a solid. It's kind, a man's onesie. We're, I know. We're kind of like the Latino J Crew onesie. <laughs> we're J Crewing it. I, like in fact, I think facing. they are two J Crew onesies. That is so. That is so bougie. Nike, wow. maybe from the Bronx, but he was born oh, bougie. Yeah, he was always bougie. It is true. It's not a choice. Yeah, he was growing up near some river and was just like, <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> We do J. Crew now. <laughs> yeah. That is so fun. I'm like truly shocked. No, but I got us robes. Um That's nice. Like um this is like a while back and uh but they're really amazing. But so we have been watching um we didn't do like a Valentine's Day thing, but um we like animal show like nature planet shows. Ooh. I, I love them. We love them. And we stumbled upon, I don't, don't even ask me how, but the most amazing series. I want everyone on earth to watch this. Okay, it's on the Smithsonian channel. It's called orangutan jungle school <laughs> oh god <laughs> which sounds like a that sounds like a band or some like hipster like it sounds like a dance club it sounds like a disney channel original <laughs> series yeah um but it is so amazing in my like i cannot get over it so it's um there's like seasons it's like a 10 episode series uh -huh. but so i didn't this is what i didn't know I hope you guys are ready for some facts. Okay, so um, orangutans are only f natural to Indonesia in Borneo. Wow. Didn't know that. They're, uh, they're nowhere else. Wow. Um, and of course, like everywhere, they're like endangered because of deforestation mm -hmm. and the like rainforest in Indonesia is being like destroyed, right. like right and left. So what's happening to a lot of them is that they're, of course, like abandoned or found or poached or like mm -hmm. sold on the illegal pet trade and all that right. stuff. Now, what makes orangutan so fascinating is that they are like much like chimpanzees they're like 97 percent share our dna but they take a really long time to grow up whereas like most animals like they're born and by age two they like already have babies and stuff like that right, right. they literally it's like they take eight years to separate from their mother moms only have one baby and the baby literally is like physically on them for two years straight so they're closer to humans they're taking that. it basically so for them to rehabilitate so it's it follows this um this rehabilitation center in the jungle and for them to rehabilitate an animal to get it to the wild it takes them 15 years wow. to get it out to the wild yeah. which is crazy so they like they don't even um they don't even start having babies till they're like 14 or 15 years old yeah they don't like lactate it's like so crazy yeah. they're really truly like human babies so they um so there's this center that um takes in all the orphans and stuff and also orangutans are like usually they're more solo like mm -hmm. they don't hang out in packs but um these are all orphans who were like you know taken from their right, mom right. so this center is so incredible they basically they have like three groups of orangutans they have like they literally call them the littlies which are like ages two and under uh -huh. they're physically like 
babies and toddler children. Wow. They're in little diapers. There's like 20 Aww. of them. Then they have like group three, group four. And it's basically, it's basically like preschool, school, junior high, and then high school. Yeah. And they go to jungle school each day. So literally the caretakers come in, get them all. They all hold hands, all the little orangutans <gasps> and buddy up. They hold each other's hands. Apparently this is a way they actually travel in the wild. It's called buddy travel. Aww. They put their little hands around each other. They walk out to the jungle and they each go to like their own classroom and where they learn how to, um, all they do all day is learn how to like forage, learn how to climb, learn how to like avoid snakes. Like they bring in little fake snakes for them to like figure out how to run away from. And it's the cutest thing you've ever seen. All the babies are like, um, I mean, the infants are literally like infants. It's so cute. And they cuddle with each other. They're hilarious. And it actually, so it follows um, the journey, of course, of like each each one. And you meet all the different monkeys. And at, for, at first you're like, how can they all tell each other apart? Like, right. who knows? You could now, I can like literally spot one and be like, Valentino is being so silly today. <laughs> <laughs> and they, so they, uh, they go to jungle school for like 10 years. And then they go to the pre-release islands, which is where they're like, they're like semi-wild but they still come to monitor them and check in on them. And okay. then once they like pass that, then they go out into the real wild and they never see them again. Um, but it's so incredible how much work they do for them, how much they take care of them, how much the babies they're, they're so intelligent. They're really like truly like humans. Right. It's so crazy. Um, and in the th series though, they, f the staff there who they've rehabilitated like 500 at any time, there's like 400 in their care or something. Yeah. It's so many, it's crazy. Um, and of course like the backstory, they like introduce a cute little baby and then they like flash back to its backstory and it's kind of like dramatic reenactment style, yeah. but it's so sad. It'll be like four year old, like, Chintua came when she was just an infant and then it'll like flashback and sometimes they have the archival footage and the children are they're like malnourished abused oh. like it's so sad but now they're okay um, but in the course of the thing they get the first albino orangutan they've ever <gasps> discovered in their lives whoa it's so white great. fur white fur blue eyes wow and it was kept as a pet like um, like the Katie's like I feel seen no truly <laughs> literally Chris was like it's you and it is so you? crazy. Uh, he's like, you're a fucking orangutan, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> they call her Alba because she's albino, and oh, she Jessica but, Alba. But literally, she's so crazy. They like they have to keep her shaded because she burns really easily, just like Aww. me at the beach. You know, we've been through this. Oh my god! And she, um, apparently, because of like the lack of melanin in her eyes, like her eyes kind of like they naturally shake. They have they have poorer vision for some reason. Oh my god! She has clear blue eyes. Literally. I used to know one really, really, really white girl. She was not albino to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. So white. The type of platinum hair that was like white, yeah. almost white, yeah. right? But she didn't have that like albino look besides that. But her eyes used to shake back and forth and they were brilliantly blue. It's exactly this orangutan. Oh my God. So the episode is so crazy. It's like, yes, just like shifting. They dance yeah. kind of, yeah. So the episode's so crazy because the the whole crew, like like all the caretakers, like holy shit, we've never s even seen one before in it's all their years. It's just a genetic anomaly. Total freak. And it looks like, um, not only that, she she looks like a, a little yet, like an abominable snowman. She looks exactly like wow. that. She's like the most magical creature. And then there's the amazing scene where they want to see if like, will the other orangutans even like deal with her right and so one is like really aggressive and then and they also don't know if she can deal with other orangutans because she's been isolated her whole life in a cage right and then um it's like the most beautiful scene like literally I, this series has made, has made me cry like five million times they like she goes into the cage and then you can see she like is quiet for a second and then she runs up and starts to try to play with all the other ones and at first they're kind of weirded out but then they get really close to her and they all smell her yeah and then like she smells like an ape so they're like okay you're cool right, right and right. so she's able to integrate with them now can i ask so are orangutans ape or are they monkeys? They're apes. They're apes. So Got apes, it. I think the rule is basically... Um, apes is old world, monkeys new world, right? <laughs> no, it's just that apes don't have tail. Like, they don't have tails. Right, but there are no apes in the new world. Right, It's right. only Africa, Asia, yeah. that, where their apes yes, exactly. currently exist. Primates, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but it's the most amazing series. So we've been watching that every single night ever since wow. we discovered it. Yeah. I'm telling everyone, like, it is... It will, like, restore your faith in humanity. They look... They're incredible creatures and, like... I already looked up. I was like, can I just go there and visit? And of course they're like, bitch, no. Like they're like, you can do donate. Go ahead. So I did, um, for Valentine's day, I did adopt Aww. a little one. Her name is Monita. Aww. And she's Monita, little monkey. Yeah, yeah. 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 And she is, she's just gorgeous. She's just my pride and joy. Um, so 
that is what I'm loving. But it is, I, I'm telling everybody has to look at them. They literally take the babies to jungle school in a wheelbarrow. And it's like 14 little tiny little just like infants <laughs> peeking out they the all hug faces. each other all the time even there's like a hilarious scene where they're trying to like teach them how to like run away from snakes yeah and there's two that are like they're so connected they're like little buddies uh-huh. and they they won't stop hugging each other and running away so they just keep rolling over each other and like the other one will try to run and the other one will hold on to it and drag it they like are yeah. not doing a good job of surviving in the wild but they are so cute and that's what matters this is the most like innocent you've ever been. I know. I was like, people would not know this about me. I'm obsessed. You, yeah, you're like a horse girl, but for monkeys <laughs> and sloths. You love sloths. Uh, yes, it is true. Yeah, it is. But orangutans are my new total obsession. I cannot like, they're just magical creatures. Yeah, and I didn't know that they um, yeah, that they're only there. So I was gonna look up to see if the LA Zoo had one. We so were watching um, a very different documentary about <laughs> chimpanzee warfare in Central Africa. Ooh, yeah, that is drama. Yeah, and so it was like all um, like blowing scientists' minds of like all these different groups in Central Africa jungle. I think it was in the Congo, where mm-hmm. these like chimpanzees they were like forming different like subgroups and subcultures, yeah. I guess, and they would like you war. got your goths, you have your steampunks. <laughs> yes. It's like hipsters v boomers. EDM, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, chimpanzees are like twice the strength of a, mm-hmm. of a, a grown man. Yeah. So they fight so brutally. Like chimpanzees are probably the closest to us. They say. Yeah, they're vicious. They're vicious. So it's like when you see like little baby chimpanzees that they put in like movies and stuff yeah. like that. It's crazy because. Like the full grown versions of a chimpanzee, they're not that big compared to humans in terms of height, but they're so strong. Like, with the human, like, have you ever seen what chimpanzees have done to humans? When oh, they where attack they rip them? off their faces? Rip off their faces. And men, they always say, rip off the genitals they, first yeah. because they're trying to take you out as a genetic competitor. Yeah. So they do that with the chimpanzees. They like rip your testicles and your penis off. And of course, what that usually just does is it kills you because you bleed to death. It's you know what so I mean? Crazy. Like if you're a chimpanzee in the wild and your genitals get ripped off by another chimp, you're just going to bleed to death. You yeah. Because there's no medical care or anything. I read Jane Goodall's first memoir and she's the queen of chimps. Yeah. Um, and they discovered that also that chimpanzees eat other monk They eat other monkeys. They're cannibalistic. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess not technically because they're apes and those are monkeys. Oh, right. But that but they will close. eat. They'll like. Oh, it was horrifying. They'll like take baby baboons and like smash their heads in and eat them like dolls. It's horrifying. But they're That's still really horrifying. important. And <laughs> no, oh, there's the craziest scene. Well, in- they're like us. Yeah. They're the closest thing in the wild to us. Like we're are. so violent. Yeah. Think about the stuff that we do. No, of course. And it's weird that like it does trip me out their size versus their strength. Because right. in one of the scenes, they are like, they're trying to um, they're trying to release a pack of them into the wild wild, but first they have to take them off the island, yeah. which means they have to tranquilize them first. Yeah. Um, and there's a scene where basically like, they try to tranquilize like the alpha male and he, he is like 200 pounds and they said he has the strength of seven men. So there's literally like 10 dudes, like they call, they're like these kind of, they're kind of like, um, like a Navy seals, but for getting these monkeys on and off the Island or apes, sorry, on and off the Island. And, um, there's a scene where basically they tranquilize them, but it's not enough or it, or it doesn't stay in long enough. And so he comes down and they go to get him thinking he's like about to pass out and he loses his shit. And it literally, it's so scary because the whole camera, it just goes like, like they're all just running for their lives. And they're all like all the dudes literally, cause apparently orangutans can't swim. So literally they're just like, oh, you just hear all this screaming. The freaking like camera goes down. They're all booking it and they all dive into the river like right before he gets to the bank. And he's like on the riverbank losing his shit, like throwing everything. Like, you know, it's so scary when you see them like shaking branches of like full things. He's in full like Mariah Mariah Carey meltdown mode. (laughs) And they're all literally just like floating in the water. They're all Carson Daly. They're all Carson (laughs) Daly like hiding in a river bank. Um, But that was like, holy shit, how scary that is is um and i just love that type of adventure travel <laughs> it is crazy uh, what was i watching recently that was like a, a an african safari in kenya where this leopard charged a safari a uh, thing Ooh. um and leopards apparently out of all the big cats they're the most aggressive mm. more aggressive than lions more aggressive than cheetahs i feel it's because like they're the hottest they are they're the, the most sleek they're th- they have the well, best cheetahs design are the most sleek but le- think- because they're the smallest, because that's why they're the fastest. Mm. Cheetahs can run 22 miles per hour. They Did you know at the fucking 
um, animal zoo park in San Diego. I was there yeah. with my niece, right? Yeah. They walk the cheetah on a leash. <sighs> and I was there. She was two or three years old. We're like walking. We turn a corner and she just goes, cat, cat, cat. And I look and all I can see is a fucking loose cheetah. Yeah. Like ahead of us. And I literally like grabbed her like. I think it got fucking out yeah. and then it kept walking and it, I could see it that its waist was on a harness. Got it. But it truly Ooh, was like the most terrifying moment at a zoo. Yeah. Um, and then they, they do a cheetah run there and you can see how quickly they go. It's crazy. It's crazy. But the leopards are the hottest. You were right. Do you yeah. want to know why? Because right. they're still bigger than cheetahs, but they're still, they're muscular. They're more muscular than cheetahs that mm-hmm. are just like, cheetahs are just like scrawny runts, you yeah. know? They're twinks. They're the Cheetahs twinks. are twinks. Leopards are jocks okay. because they're like muscular, but the lean muscle, right? Yeah, they're so, not like thick, right. thick boys. Lions are the thick boys. Lions oh, yeah. are like, we only lift, no cardio. <laughs> you know? One time I also was at a zoo and uh, the lion, like they were doing this, it's called like chuffing. It's like when Ew. they, it's like they go like. Yo, you want to chuff? <laughs> Bro, chuff time. It's when they go like. <laughs> you chuffed me so hard last it's time. Like, <laughs> so horrifying but it's like this behavior they do to kind of like mark or whatever yeah and um don't they spray the little urine they do and it's you can smell it so strongly oh, wow. um but i was like again like with my niece and poppers one of the other ones pissed off the other like the big dad the, da- the daddy lion the big daddy lion <laughs> and he roared <gasps> and i'm not kidding i was like whoa this is why humans i lit- i felt it in my feet first the bass was so strong i didn't yeah. even hear it i literally felt a vibration i thought it w- i thought it was an earthquake Oh. We were that close, and I literally was like, because you know how, like, right before you can just feel like, like this yeah. weird shaking when yes. the earth starts? Yes. I literally, I felt that go through my body and in my feet, and then I heard the vocalization. Oh it God. was the, I was like, this is how they can, like, truly paralyze you. Yeah. On it, like, on the thing, you know? I do, I have so much respect for animals, and I do kind of love when they, like, like, I mean, I understand why they charge a safari. Like, I don't want to die, but right. I also am kind of always, like, team animal. Like, did you see right. that freaking bear in Monrovia today that people were, like, an idiot taking pictures of? Oh, yeah. I saw a video, but I didn't click into it because I was like, it was a bear. It was just roaming bears around. bears are crazy. Yeah, and people were, like, fucking idiots, like, 10 feet from it taking <gasps> pictures. There was, like, a whole, like, you could see the helicopter, you could see the bear, and then all these dumbasses. I honestly kind of almost wish something had happened because they're so stupid. That is actually stupid. There are people when, because of how stupid you were to even put yourself in that position you it is one of those rare cases of like you were actually asking for this yeah. you know what i mean like if you're hunting if you're poaching and if you're just like a stupid idiot who's like there's a bear 10 feet from the bear it's like literally all a bear can move 10 feet in like seconds and yeah. just crush your head and destroy it that's my one of my favorite stand-up bits of all time is cat williams bit about the dudes who got killed by lions in the san francisco zoo guys google it it's one of my <gasps> the most iconic bits it's the funniest bit i've ever heard they got killed by lion they snuck into they, the cage they snuck into the, the enclosure why exactly because they were dumb teen boys and thought they were gonna be they funny. were teen boys mm-hmm. this is like years wow. back and, and they all francisco. got eaten i think two of them yeah got killed which is good like honestly you, you you're an idiot i know it's you know they just it is crazy people always say about teenagers like Remember when you were a teenager and you felt like, I'll never die. Yeah. I can't even. And I was like, I fully was like, before I was even having sex, was like, I have AIDS. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was not a teenager that was like, and it's because it's a straight guy thing. I don't think it's a gay guy thing. Yeah. Because I think gay men and women. <laughs> yeah. But if you think about it, women are confronted with their own mortality. Maybe this is not true. Um, but tell me if it's true. This okay. is a theory that I just came okay. up with yeah. right yeah. now, yeah. Katie. Okay. Women are confronted with their own mortality because they literally bleed. Okay. Okay, every okay. month. So it's like life force coming out, right? <laughs> and then gay men are confronted with their own mortality, not only because everyone is like, oh my God, if you are this thing, it's totally not okay, but also because of post-AIDS. Right. It's very much like gayness is just attached to AIDS. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think both of those, like people are always like, I was always the scared one of yeah. like being like, once I saw when me and my parents were on vacation in Hawaii, we saw these like French uh, tourist straight boys who were like all like ripped and skinny, like little French people. And they were jumping off this huge, huge um, waterfall into like a very shallow, small pond in the middle of the rainforest. And we were all there in the river of the rainforest, like up to our knees. Like you had to do that. In my mind, you look like a Destiny Child in the Survivor video. They're all like in a waterfall. Yeah. Oh, what I did love what I did love about Hawaii though, because all the pictures 
as soon as we landed, I was fully five shades darker. Like, like <laughs> immediately. Like, me and my parents, all of us, like, we were just, like, standing there, just, like, three brown people in the just rainforest. Just sun-kissed. Yeah. Um, but I was fat. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so they were all, like, jumping in. My, my, my dad was just like, that is so stupid. And they all survived. But it's like, this is classic how people die. Like, they hit their head on a boulder at the bottom of the pond because yeah. they're jumping from too high of a point. So you're coming down, and the, there's not enough depth to hold yeah. you you know um but none of them died not that you knew of not that I and knew then of. i got there <laughs> yeah well we did throw them into a crater to <laughs> to stop a, to stop the apocalypse out of, lo- out of lo- a crater of lava <laughs> uh yeah to appease the gods yes <laughs> that is so um it's so stupid it's such a dude thing just to be like, you know yeah um but this is how you know that i am from the water when we went snorkeling <laughs> i um we were we went out way out into the ocean to this like crater peeking out of the ocean. You had to go on this boat. It was just me and my dad. And um my dad can swim ish, but like he grew up like back in a time where it's like you couldn't really like use the public mm, pool. Like yeah. it was like city kid public Segregated, pools. Yeah. yeah. So um but then also um I've been swimming since I was a little kid and I was just like so mesmerized by the underwater world <laughs> yeah and there was fish like s- it's so dense with fish like as soon as you hit the water yeah fish rubbing up against you and so i have a crazy. wetsuit on but i'm just like and i can swim and tread water so i'm just like in the middle of the ocean just swimming with like a little snorkel mask on and there's like sea turtles and everything and and um I end up swimming and they cannot like really see me. And when I finally come up, I'm so far away from the boat. I'm we're in the middle of the ocean. <gasps> You're like in deep water, like one of those movies. I'm so far away from the boat. I thought I was safe because I was I swam from one boat to another boat that was a ways <gasps> oh away. And I was right by their rudder, like yeah. the propeller. And I wait and I see like in the distance, like little ants like waving to me, and I had to swim back on my own. I was eleven. Oh my gosh. In in open water. My dad was so scared. He was like watching me swim back, like <gasps> something could happen. And I was just like, but I was a really good swimmer. You were like I didn't feel I didn't feel weird at all. I yeah. just felt like just go back. You're a water witch. I'm a water witch. Yeah. That is so. I love. It's funny. I don't really care about dogs, and I said it. Cancel me. That is the one thing that will get me canceled in my whole career. I don't domestic animals. I like cats. They're fine. Like, but right. domestic animals don't really care about her. Um, well, because they they have a lot of help. I know that there's still a lot of mistreatment of those animals, but they have a lot of help compared to like animals that are endangered yeah. because of deforestation. And, and also stuff. just wild animals that are like so majestic and incredible. Like yeah. I have such respect. I, I'm obsessed with them. It's like, you would never know about me, but I just know a lot of fun facts about wild animals. Um, it's true because some of them are like, have you, okay, have you seen that? We, what's that bird called? It's like a black bird mm-hmm. with like blue like it's like a blue rooster. It's the but planet it's giant. Earth one, and it looks crazy when it like pops out. Yes, yeah. but it's it's tall. It's like mm. six foot three. It's oh, like oh, emus. As, is that an emu? No, an emu is a tiny little thing. There's no, I mean, and emus are smaller than ostriches. Right, but they're but, still tall. But they're still tall, and they have blue blue on, on them. Yeah, they're cra- it, those yeah. are those are legit dinosaurs. Yeah, for sure. Ostriches are dinosaurs. I f- I feed them when I go to the ostrich farm in Central California. Really? Yeah. They have emus. Yeah, they have emus and. Emus are mean, meaner. Yeah, but I mean, like, don't they like smack are... you with their horn? They have like a horn. Right? Oh, though, no, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know which one you're talking about. Okay, but... well, there's a special type of bird that is very tall. It's jet black. It's like um, either a like a neon blue, like or black horn, Ooh. and they with their heads could like kill you, like by just like smacking you with this like horn that they have. They're like the they 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 look like. The evil cousins of ostriches. That is also such a bitchy way because the way you like swung your little neck. <laughs> that's how they do it. I'd be like, can you not slap me with your horn right now? <laughs> and that's how the males fight. They like bang their horns together. It is so. And they have crazy talents. They'll just like scratch you. They are. I need to find the like bird and show it to you later. Birds, yeah. No, they look like dinosaurs, Katie. Yeah. There are some things that are just like so. Ostriches are dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Crocodiles, alligators, dinosaurs. Yes, absolutely. Komodo dragons, dinosaurs. Yes. The crazy black birds I just described, dinosaurs. Emus, dinosaurs. Iguanas. Iguanas, dinosaurs. Yeah. What else are dinosaurs? We walk among dinosaurs. Truly, it's so true. Trump. <laughs> Trump is a dinosaur. All of Congress, and we got political. <laughs> we said it. <laughs> also, chickens. Oh, yeah. It is, isn't it so weird that birds are more dinosaur than like reptile, than a snake is? Right. You know? And then they, they found out that a lot of dinosaurs actually had feathers. Oh, yeah. Which makes sense. Because they were gay. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> These are the gay dinosaurs. I wish we should do a Jurassic Park where there's like they discover all the gay ones and they're just like very beautifully like plumed. Right. You know? And they're always just in synchronization dance like yeah. mating dances. Yes. <laughs> just like with their like little T Rex. And arms. then their little call is just Daddy. <laughs> No, Zaddy. 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 <laughs> Zaddy. Zaddy Saurus Rex. Yeah. That's so dumb. I love, but I'm I Daddy, do love Daddy him, Saurus Rex is a great drag king name, and that's your drag king that name. That is 100 Daddy Saurus Rex. That is so funny. That is so your drag king name. <laughs> I love. Can you imagine, though, if. Okay. And I know this is like. I don't really. I don't watch movies that are like, oh, a monster comes back. Like, they're cheesy to me. Yeah, yeah. But full on, what would you truly do if you like were walking late one night on one of your demon walks. Yeah. Like what, what would you do if you f- truly came across a dinosaur? Probably initially completely freeze. Mm-hmm. And we would probably have this moment of looking at each other. Like most animals do sizing each other up. Yeah. You know, when you like run across a coyote or a mountain lion and you're yeah. just like, you yeah. know, and then you have to get big and you have to be like, Mah! you know, <laughs> so depending on how big the dinosaur was, I would try that. Okay. If not, you just like high kick just to like, yeah, because of Fan course yourself out. I'm I'm the type of person that even with humans late at night especially like what you have to do what I was always taught especially from my dad is when you're in like a tight situation it's very tense you have to go into fight mode and you need to be scarier and more savage than mm-hmm. whatever whatever motherfucker that you're yeah. is your opponent. Yeah. And so um you have to scare people. So I have had uh, like times when I was like walking, like especially early in stand up, when I would like not have a car, go to like really long, pl- like I would like take the bus from Eagle Rock to Culver City, like yeah. late at night, when I would like come across like someone who looked kind of sketchy or like was mumbling to themselves or whatever, or was doing the worst late at night, mumbling to themselves and then making jagged movements. Oh, with yeah. their, the worst. You basically have to scare that person. Yeah. And honestly, I was good at it. <laughs> They're just like, ooh, you know. Um, so I'd try that. And then if the dinosaur was like obviously way too big for me to do that, I would just like try to run and hide. But maybe that would be the end of me. And honestly, if I got eaten by a dinosaur, who else could say that anymore? Yeah, that would be the most diva way you would go. He got ripped apart by a dinosaur. But by I a daddy source. A daddy source. He got. <laughs> he Honey, died. that was your that was your Wednesday night getting ripped apart by dinosaurs. By a daddy source, Rex. No, but I really like. Um, I, I do think it's so fascinating. I love that there are. You always hear like a random news story, like once a year, that like they've discovered a new creature somewhere. Yeah. Like in the world, or it's always in the jungles. Yeah. Um, but I do love that. But I do think it's crazy too to like. Because we're so used to like we know everything in the world, we've seen everything. It must be such a trip to be a human somewhere and see a creature that you've never seen before, and you're like, I don't even understand what she is. You that's, know what I mean? That's you in Oaxaca, <laughs> the, the indigenous women. Remember you said they were looking at you at the train station? Oh yeah, they kept looking at you because they were like, we've never seen anyone this white up close before. They were like, what is it? It's terrifying. They were like, only on the TV. <laughs> yeah, they were like, ghost. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, Chris said one time he was in my neighborhood and there's like a lot of like, I live in Little Armenia. So there was yeah. an old Armenian or like Eastern European man. Yeah. And Chris was walking. It was like nighttime and he was like walking up to my house and um, uh, there was a raccoon mm-hmm. like ran across the street or was like digging in the trash and like that. Yeah. And there was a little old man like, you know, walking near Chris and then he saw it and then he froze and he grabbed Chris and he went, sir, what is that? <laughs> and he'd never seen a raccoon and Chris was like, oh, it's a raccoon. And he was like, Will it kill me? And then Chris was like, no, 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 it's okay. Like he had just never seen one before. He must have been visiting or something. That is true because um, different North country, American, yeah. different countries and diff- not even not even um, continents, just yeah. different cities. So when I went to Mexico City for the first time last year, what I did notice is their squirrels are different from ours. <laughs> they have different squirrels. Katie. Honey, San Diego has different squirrels. <laughs> no, they don't. Not no. There's different types of American, like Californian squirrels. Like maybe in Michigan, they look different than in California or something. But in in California, the squirrels are like a brown auburn, and they're fluffy, right? And they have that characteristic tail. That's kind of how they are, right? Yeah. And then in Mexico, they all have little mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in Mexico, in Mexico City, the squirrels at the parks, they were jet black. And their tails were more scraggly. They were more like, 
they were more like a feather boa rather than like a <laughs> full on like mink fur like what yeah, the like tails of yeah. right this was more like a little rinky dink uh, feather boa but jet black skinnier but with a brown underbelly like they look like the mean cousins of like the California <laughs> like the squirrels. hot mean ones oh yeah way hotter and because they weren't they're in a hotter environment so they're not like as like fluffed up yeah so they look more svelte and stuff but they are aggressive <laughs> they'll just come up and like slap you and take your licuado out your hand and just like sip it <laughs> It's true. I love my favorite thing about Mexico uh, last time I was there, or just in general, I love, especially when you're down at the coast, there's always like black marine iguana, marine iguanas, mm. which are black. And I love them because they just like kiki on the little rocks. Yes. And they'll also just come out. It's also just to us, it's like crazy to walk out and just see an iguana just chilling. It's crazy. And people don't freak out. And there was one, it was like always just like, it was like, it looked like a really bored model. Like, yeah, it they was do. like It was always just like, it's like not fat, but it's they're like thick, you know? They're thick, yeah. And so it would just be like, by our front door and it would just be like hey <laughs> know, yeah. what are you doing <laughs> like, and the, so was this in Oaxaca mm-hmm. so these were black yeah okay so in Yucatan they're green and when everywhere in Yucatan are just humongous greed iguanas <laughs> laying like I would literally be talking with Nike and I would like look over my shoulder there'd just be one lodging I'd be like ah like, yeah. just be like to the point where it just became so prevalent yeah. the one the place where they're littered but it seems like it's a perfect place for them is they really make the Mayan ruins their home. Oh yeah. When you go to the ruins, they're like great set dressing for it. Oh too. no, they are. And you know, what's crazy is, you know, they've been there since the Mayan civilization was around. Yeah. So, um, when we were at Uxmal in, um, Yucatan, you could just like see them everywhere in the grass, sitting on the stones. It's crazy because you'd be like climbing up these steps, you know, that you have to like climb yeah. with your whole body, right? And then like you would reach out to a step and there's just like some iguana being like, oh, are you trying to, <laughs> are you trying to pass? Because the steps are steep. Like you can't have something lying there. Yeah. You need to, so then you'd have to kind of like go around Ugh. and we filmed some and then Nike loved them and, and um, my boyfriend Nike was like filming them and he was just like filming them eating and he you could hear him like saying in back of the camera, munch, munch. <laughs> like, just like... <laughs> Because they are cute. No, I do. They they don't. It's but it's funny how they're like, cute, ugly. Some you know? reptiles freak you out. Some don't. You know. They're because iguanas don't. They're not venomous. Yeah. They're not right. I, there's no, no venomous. Iguanas. They don't care about you either. Yeah. They. I think they would only bite you if you really were fucking up with them. But I think it wouldn't be like a venomous bite. Yeah. And they only eat like insects and plants, right? Yeah. So, they don't care. They're just like whatever. But they are. They are a great like um, style choice. And I bet. Ruins. I bet you in those tropical environments iguanas are really welcomed because without them think about the insect population without iguanas eating them yeah insane well it that's why insane. honestly and i say shout out to snakes hey girls um you, every creature you need and people hate spiders but i'm like if there weren't spiders you would die of mosquitoes right like everybody is so related no we like spiders but i don't want a spider in my room right you know what i mean because some of these spiders are fucking huge yeah and they're they have attitudes and remember i was bitten by a spider a big spider on my ball Oh yeah, remember that was recent, and it was a big. It was like, it was like a big spider, and I looked up the bite. I took a picture of the bite on my ball, googled it for your OnlyFans, <laughs> for my OnlyFans, put it up, and they were like, "Oh, it's a wolf spider." Wolf spider is as big oh, yeah. as this fucking they're, card. They're demons. They're huge. Yeah, um, because a spider that was tinier couldn't make that big of an incision because the bite on my balls was like fangs. It almost looked like a, a snake bite, but of course it wasn't a snake bite. That's it. It was insane. And then I thought it was like turning black, oh my not my balls, but just the like bite. Nicole. And I was like, my balls better not like fall off or like turn black. <laughs> I'm going to be so pissed if this I spider. W- oh yeah. And so then, um, I just kept putting Neosporin and it finally went away, but it took weeks to go away. So it was a gnarly bite. That is terrifying. And it was just happened probably when we were sleeping. I, um, so s- spiders hate you. Yeah. Bees hate me so much. So I've like, I, I don't have an anaphylactic reaction to bees, but I, I'm very highly allergic when I get stung <sighs> and rash. I swear to God, they came for me literally like <laughs> five seasons in a row, five yeah. summers, every single time I went on vacation. Yeah. But this is like the level, like, so when I was little, I once like stepped on one and it's stinger went in me and appa- I like swole so quickly that we didn't get the stinger out oh, and wow. my foot swole to like truly a little, <laughs> imagine like a, a, a very like 
little puffy, not even a puffy sausage. I couldn't, I couldn't walk on my foot anymore for like two weeks. And finally they had to take me to the doctor because my little, my little piggy hoof was like oh, triple the size. And then um, they had to like surgically like extract it. Yeah. Um, and then I, Fuck. and I've, I've literally been stung by a bee in every t- climate, in every temperature at every time. It, like I stepped on one, which is like, that's my fault. Um, I remember one time I got freaking stung at Plymouth Plantation in you deserve in it. Boston Pilgrim and it, my mom my freaking pagan parents or whatever my mom didn't send me to the first aid she goes my mom's like oh maybe there's a a mistress who can put a poultice on it here and she freaking took me to the like n- n- the like nursemaid's hut oh, God. and the like living history actor there my mom was like uh, my literally mom my mom was like a uh, good maiden uh, a query for you good morrow and then she was like um my child here has got that and then the lady was like yeah you should probably put like something on that and i was like mom can you fucking take me to the first aid and um, i was like what a strange ways to word the sentence yes. <laughs> i was like please um and then one time it was winter and i was putting on my shoe and a bee was hanging out in it this was like seven years ago and then i was at barnstall park putting on suntan lotion and i literally was just like rubbing it on my skin and apparently there was a bee on me and then yeah. it freaking stung me but i always have to um you know like when you get stung by something and it swells you you like sharpie a circle around the swelling so you can see how far it's spreads past the sharpie. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Survival tip. Whoa. So, so I always have see. to do that. And then my... It is true. Bees hate you. They do hate me so and, much. And spiders do hate me because they bit me on my ball. And remember, I told you that story about how I left for school in junior high. First thing, I walk out of my parents' house. My mom's about to drive me to school. I'm the first person to leave. Open the door. Walk out. Suddenly, it feels like a nylon pantyhose is suffocating oh, over my no. face. It's <gasps> the thickest, biggest oh. spider web that is so over my face. When my mom said that she was trying to get it off me, it looked like I had put one of her pantyhose oh, on. Oh, my God. That's how thick this web was. <sighs> Hanging off of the web on my face was a giant spider, okay? <gasps> like the size of my thumb, oh. okay? It was a gray an orange spider and it didn't bite me luckily because I was frantic and I think because I had the web over my face yeah. it was like a protectant so I was frantic got the web off so disgusting also had long hair like oh my god bit, absolutely awful and then my mom with her tiny little patita she just like smashes it with her little tacon like it's just like yeah. and it like is like a crunch and then under her shoe was just like this huge spider that was like just crunched and she was like i shouldn't have done that because if it had bit you we need the spider to see what venom but luckily it bit me since then i was like disgusted every time i walk into a spider web i'm like oh gross and i've walked into many since yeah like they hate me i know it does happen i i do respect them and i from afar their webs can be crazy do you know that spider season is like um august september late summer no do know because that's when they like their webs are everywhere it's like you'll see them it's like truly like farmer's almanac like style yeah. and one time we were walking this last summer we were walking back from house of pies uh-huh. it was like nighttime and i almost walked into a web but it was like the biggest web you'd yeah. ever seen like i swear to god it was like between two telephone poles it was almost and a big fat spider in the middle of it like yeah. working on it right so i was like i didn't want to bother it. and what am i gonna do like knock it down you know right but we're going and there was a runner like running hardcore near us and i was like i was like hey dude stop and he didn't and i literally had to like physically like stop him and he was like what and i was like dude the web and he was like holy shit like it was the craziest um wait how thing. low was this web kitty <clears throat> No, I mean it was it was like face distance. Then you have to knock it down because someone is gonna inevitably but overnight, knock it down. They just do it overnight, and it was like he was like running around us. No, but they do it until someone comes and knocks it down. That's the problem. Those webs know. in in busy urban areas, most of the time the spider doesn't undo it in time because it's in a, such a busy area. Someone's gonna walk out of their house. Making a web over a front door is insane. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like maybe if we were gone, it's aggressive. For, it's aggressive. <laughs> Maybe if we were gone on vacation for like a month, which we would n- could never afford to be away for that long. But if we were, then I could understand because it's like no one's coming in and out, right? Yeah. But like they they must have built that web like within an hour or two right before we left. Lo- it's like, what the fuck? They love the attention. They love an entrance. <laughs> it's insane. So honestly, what I would have done in that situation, gotten a fucking tree branch, knocked down that spider's web. It was so, I was being very zen because sometimes you're like, I don't want to, and it was fascinating to see her like make, also it's a herb. So you hate women. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> uh, no, here's the thing. I hate webs. Okay. I hate being caught, caught in your web of deception. And your web of lies. It. Yes. So. <laughs> here's the thing. 
I would not have killed the spider. What I would have done is just on the side of the web, cut it with the tree branch and undid it because w w if the, with the rest of the web still intact, the spider would have grabbed onto it and survived. I would never kill the spider for no reason. Yeah. The only time I kill spider is if you bit me on my ball. When I find you, I will kill you. You're still, you, you actually are still on a revenge hunt for that spider. <laughs> Luckily, they bit me on the testicle sack skin. But not the ball, meaning the so the fangs the fangs didn't go through the skin onto yeah. my testicle. Yeah, because I think that would have just made me sterile or have little spider babies. Oh God, that that is something you would do. Okay, do you remember? Let's have a follow up to this one. Do you remember the time you called me and you were like, "I think I have this really rare skin condition," where and I, he's like, and you were like, "I've been googling it a lot." I feel like there's a wire growing out of me and there's not. That. And you were like, going to go to the doctor about it. There, I do have that. Every once in a while it occurs. It's called, so the, the crazy um, skin condition that, that I was kind of talking about and your boyfriend, Chris, when I even <laughs> said, I think I have a wire, he went more gelons. Like he already knew about what? it. What? He knew about it. Yeah. He's like, Oh Yeah. He said it very matter of fact. He wasn't like surprised or anything. What? This is why this is why our friendship, me and him, um, as friendship is necessary. Because whenever <laughs> you think that I'm fucking insane, or whether whenever you think he's insane, <laughs> chances are we it's me, me and all him. Along. <laughs> no, yeah, me and him actually get each other for that instance. You know oh what I mean? Oh my god. That was one of those instances Chris knew exactly what I was talking about. He knew, he finished my sentence. I remember I think I was on the phone with him. So Oh my God. It's this disorder where like beige, red, and blue wires start to grow out of your skin and they're almost like plastic metallic wires and they grow out of your skin and they can like, they've ruined, this This condition has ruined people's lives because it can get so severe that there's nothing that you can do. And it's like, it'll grow out of your face, it'll grow out of your hands, different bodies. They don't know what causes it. And it's so rare that they don't even know anything about the condition and there's even been scientists which i don't believe any of them because they don't know enough information about this um condition but these scientists have tried to delegitimize the condition by saying that it's being caused it's a physical manifestation of mental illness so that these people were manifesting the our own physical wires it's like what? So you as a doctor no, can physically touch the wire. Like there's pictures of it. And you're saying that it's my mental illness that's causing a physical manifestation. Even if that's true, how is this then happening? you're a witch. Right. That I'm literally jaw dropped. So on my neck, there was this, um, there, there was this thing that was like this like wiry thing that was like kind of growing out and it was the color of my skin. It was like a beige wire and it was not hair and it was like coming out. So then I kind of got rid of it because it was like coming out of like a weird like blemish pimple type thing, but it had no liquid or anything in it. That's what was oh weird. Oh my God, I'm it, so horrified right now. It's so horrified. <gasps> so what I did, now the good thing is it didn't really hurt. So I just kind of, it was bugging me and then it like kind of got longer. Now, I had it on my neck forever because it's the color of my skin. You didn't even notice it. Chris couldn't even, I remember I like, I was like, oh, can you see that? And it's like, and Nike even was like, oh no, I can't even see it. I'd have to, sh I'd have to like show you or the wire would have to like get bigger. Yeah. Right. So I just got a razor and I like shaved it down yeah. and it kind of bled, but it went away and it didn't hurt. Like the wire part didn't hurt. It was only when it hit contact with my skin, did it hurt? Right. So it went away and then it started to occur on my ear like months and months later. And then I just shaved that part down and then it went away. And then it occurred on the other ear months and months later. And then I like shaved it down and it's wire. It's not hair. You can, you can feel the difference. Remember my hair is jet black. I have black hair all over my body. So if it was hair, it would be that color. And when you feel it, it doesn't even feel like a hair fi fiber. It's like a wire, like a plastic like, wire. I'm not even kidding, but the I'm thin, thin plastic. I'm wire. like, like think of fiber optic wire. Full on. I'm like, humans are cyborgs. Well, this is what I'm telling you. I have there. Look, the ancestry test <laughs> is inconclusive. You had five percent unassigned. Yes, I had. <laughs> I had four point five percent unassigned. Um, so all they they know that I'm. Uh, what did my ancestry test say? It said I was like 60-ish percent, 60, 60-ish percent European and like 31% percent 
Native American. And then the remaining, I think, what is that, 9% is just like small amounts of like African and Middle Eastern and stuff like that. But there's like 4.5% of that 9%. That's just small genetic noise. Yeah. Um, that's just unassigned, which it could be more native blood because what I was reading is um, these like DNA tests, they mostly have like white DNA. So like African-Americans, Latinos, Asians will take the test and we will always come out with a small, small percentage of us that has unassigned DNA. So you're always going to come out with like 5%, 6%, 7% yeah, that's unassigned. Yeah, because they haven't like tested the groups They yet. haven't yeah, yeah. tested enough African tribes, enough yeah. Native American tribes. So obviously if you're like a person of color, they don't have enough genetic database. So what you will see is as you they have your DNA forever. So if you check back into your DNA results, the uh, most people of color, their like Africanness, their native American or their Asian um, DNA percentage goes up over time. Yeah. It's because, and usually not by much, like they'll get the most of it, but it's like, let's say you were like 93% African, right? <laughs> like over time it can go up to 98% because the unassigned, they just figure out it's like more African DNA. They that find they, the tribes. Yeah. They There's like, a big um, push right now, especially in Africa. They're trying to, Right. Like this big genealogy project or right and, and and that's a big thing here too they're trying to get like more indigenous dna but of course like people who are part of the tribes all around the americas they a, a lot of the tribal leaders are like don't do yeah the, because they don't want they're afraid the government or these companies they don't trust it yeah, yeah are going to exploit their dna yeah so they end up getting the native american dna mostly from latinos from latin america because so many latinos carry such a high amount that oh, they could get the genetic markers from them interesting right well i'm sorry that i hopefully i don't get more jealous just... and I, I hope if i'm an android katie i will fucking <laughs> if i'm an android i will be so fucking pissed Okay, if you're an Android, you will end up on every fucking diversity panel. You will <laughs> literally human. get your own fucking sitcom. I'm going to be literally so pissed if you're an Android. <laughs> my gay best friend Android. <laughs> literally, oh my God. And then yeah. and then I'd be, you'd be like, this is Android erasure. And then I'd be like, honey, don't get your wires in a twist. <laughs> and I'm like, I may, my first Android joke, I may be an Android, but I do have an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I just saw Blade Runner for the first time. Have you seen that? I'm not a straight man. I can't talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I, <laughs> no but, I have seen it. Actually, what was so cool, and shout out to my boyfriend, um, the train station, Union Station, does yeah. like cultural events or whatever. Uh -huh. And for a summer, they were doing all the movies that um, had been shot there. So we were like in the main hall watching Blade Runner when he's like walking through the main hall where you're in. That's it was pretty so cool. cool. That was the coolest, yeah. So, we and have that seen was it. the scene with Edward James Olmos. Probably, yeah. He okay, Edward James Olmos. That's why I watched Blade Runner because I was like, I need to see this movie because he's like one of he's the most famous Chicano actor. Yeah, and I was like, can't believe I haven't seen the movie, and <clears throat> I wanted more of him in it. He was like a much more like supporting minor part, but he was cool. He had like cool contacts, and Harrison Ford was a snack. I yeah, thought he, he was, was so yeah, cute. So um. But it was still, it held up the cinematography. Sorry. <coughs> yeah, was the beautiful. vibes. Um, who is it? Bo Dar uh, Hannah. Who's the chick? The blonde chick? Daryl Hannah. Daryl Hannah. Yeah. Every time I come out of the shower, all my mascara is down. And then <coughs> Chris is always like, why are you in Blade Runner right now? <laughs> she had like true. really dark eyes. Yeah. Um, and she yeah. was like, was she the the showgirl? Like the stripper showgirl? She was like the crazy kind of like jester boss. Yes. Yeah. That is exactly who you look like. She had the like 80s um, yes. kiss haircut, but totally. in platinum blonde. Yeah. And like to attack, she just like did a bunch of backflips yes. and then like <laughs> locked her thighs around you and snapped your little neck. Yeah. yeah. She was fun. Um, but we also live by the, I go to the Blade Runner house. Or we live near it. It's the Mayan mansion. Really? The Frank Lloyd Wright one. Oh, it's right yeah. up in the neighborhood. Yeah. That is it. It's crazy. And, but you know what's crazy about Blade Runner is it takes place in like this year. Right. Which is like, oh, girl, you're so off. It is not as future as you thought it was going to be. I know. And it, it's funny that it was like all in like Chinatown. It was like yeah. future Chinatown. Or the future is Chinese. <gasps> well, Messaging. they were kind of right about that. Yeah. They were like, there's going to be in the future in America, there's going to be such a big Asian influence, I guess, because they were seeing back in like the early 80s, maybe like a lot of China, uh, Asian like corporations were buying properties or something. So maybe they just projected that. Interesting. So I don't know. I don't know. Where are we at? Um, we are at time. I think we're at time about. Let's get the fuck out. Well, guys, that's been Blade Runner news. 
from um, the, from the year 2020. We're signing off. We had a savage cancellation, which is why we have to do a hostful <laughs> episode today. Okay, savage. Okay, <gasps> bye. bye. Living glam, living rough, living with Jonathan and Katie.